Good morning. I often do a lot of Asian vegetables and that could spread from what might be included in the Middle East out to China. A bit more specifically would be Chinese vegetables, but again it that over overlaps with Southeast Asia, Thailand, so on. And it covers a vast array of vegetables. But more specifically this is about almost Asian brassicas. I mentioned in a uh, video about all the aphid hessian books. They're great, they're good all rounder, but if you're wanting to have a bit closer look at Chinese vegetables, Asian vegetables, specific books. I'd recommend these two. I think they're both out of print. I picked these up really cheap off Amazon, I'm, I'm guessing, and very good explanation. You'll often find they have multiple names, both Anglo-Saxon names, uh, local names to the country, and in turn Chinese names. I'm only going to concentrate on what I call Asian greens, which are the brassicas, and they split down again into a number of different groups. But if you just remember the brassicas, they're largely quick growing, you won't go wrong. In other words, you grow them the same as any other cabbage. Just remember they've got the same pests as other cabbage, but they grow, tend to grow a lot quicker. And it's a great system. It's been evolved over so much time. It's great for a continental climate, which is cold and hot and no, very little in between. And I remember a few years ago, certain members of the committee on the allotment complaining about someone being very slow in clearing their allotment because they were new on the committee, wanted to keep things tidy and they always start clearing very late in the late spring, in May. Six weeks later, the allotment's full of veg. They don't spend six months growing a, a moldy old cabbage which you have to look after, keep the pests off. They grow quick stuff. So here's one, and that's red tat soy. The red, I don't know whether it adds to the flavour, they just look quite nice. And there's a big overlap, or at least I, I grow an overlap. I grow an overlap of Japanese vegetables, which, if you start looking at the history, I think were probably originally taken from China, Korea, and merged into their own with selective breeding. And those are like, a, those are sometimes known as mustards, and they look like big pak choy. They all grow about the same rate. There's very little difference in getting it ones. And at this time of year, they'll hit flowering after six to eight weeks of growing. You think they've bolted, they have bolted. They do the same in spring, just take longer getting there. But this time of year, you can absolutely hammer them and hammer them. This one is Sentosai, something like that. It sounds like a place in the end of Singapore. And it's the first time I've grown them, but Japanese. Um, again, they're quick growing, so I quite often get in the catalogues um, Asian brassicas, and I'll try them out in the summer and then do them properly next year. The sticks are just to keep the pigeons off. Those are red pak choy at the end. I never see these in Asia. I don't know if these are an Anglo Saxonized uh, version. These are bok choy, foodie, Hong Kong friend. He can't tell me specifically the difference of bees, if there's a difference in season. My own view is they're more, they're just like an oversized, a bok choy, an oversized pak choy. And with these, they're cut and cut again, they're rapid sowing. They're, I suppose, almost like an Asian lettuce. If you deal with them in the same way, and sowing. So these are a pak choy, and again, you'd start eating from this size. Anglo-Saxon world, you go in a big supermarket, they're huge. You don't eat them that size, you start eating them now, and certainly if I had a whole bed of these, if I started eating them when it got that size, or a bit smaller, by the time I get to the end, they just start to bolt. There's this uh, Thai form of dill there, it's not specifically within our remit. Come up sooner, that's a uh, Again, realistically, like um, an overlarge pak choy, but halfway between a wongbok cabbage. Incidentally, they're one of the hardest things for me to grow. They're daylight sensitive, hate root disturbance, and I unlike rich food, and I really struggle with Chinese cabbage. Oh, sorry, Chinese. Yes, Chinese headed cabbage. I often grow lab joints or a cos lettuce as a replacement.
a little gem. So it's a flowering pak choy, and if you're new to these things, you'll say, hey, it's beginning to bolt. Yeah, it's becluzing the name. And actually, for this variety of pak choy, there's very little leaf. And if you were growing them for the first time, you think, oh my god, there's no leaf, there's nothing, it's bolted, it's not worked. It has. Leave that a bit longer, probably at this rate, 10, 12 days, and it's the stem. That's the sneaky one, it's the stem. Now there's other things like Mabuna, Japanese parsley, Mizuna, which was another Chinese one, and a lot of these love club root. They're very basic, they're not improved vastly. So I know Mizuna likes club root. The only advantage you've got over a big manky European cabbage is that they grow quick and tend to outgrow their club root. So the club root, but the plant will manage to grow. And these are successional. How you use them, that's another issue. I can grow the stuff, cooking it and stir frying it, and that's for someone else. The other common green, which is a really, really easy one to grow, are, is choy sum. And they're another one which appear to have bolted. They've just reached flowering stage. Again, it's how you turn these things. And these are ready. You don't throw them away. It's not going to alter the taste once they start bolting here. Not vastly. And again, they love club root, and you just grow them as brassicas. Can't remember if that's another form of a tatsoi. Either way, it was seed from last year. I forgot, so I'm experimenting with. But I know it's a brassica. I like mustards. That's what that is actually. It's a mustard, but it had no label. It had a label on, but I don't speak Thai. Or read, sorry, I don't read Thai. Sanskrit. And my common one, which I do every year and loves loves club root. So it's an awful lot of work preparing the soil. Is Chinese broccoli, Gai Lan, Pak Gana. It's got loads of names depending on which country, and that doesn't taste like cabbage. It's non-heading. You eat the stems. You eat the leaves, and my son, it's an uphill challenge getting him to eat the veg. Asparagus. People say it tastes sweet. And all of these are really easy to grow. They'll often appear to bolt after midsummer. To me, they just reach the end point quicker. They just grow like bilio on steroids at this time of year. But I'd often find better with a spring crop. And from now, although this year I'm doing a second crop of this and the Chinese broccoli, and we're looking at probably three months for that. So that is a big long haul. The others, the mustards really, and the pak choys, they're all really quick. As I said, they'll go on on the Asian vegetables to speak about the yard long beans. I've tried and tried growing them here. You need to be in the tropics, the kabosha or Kirkaba mosha, I think. Pumpkins will grow and you tend to get more growing them up, but those are another subject. This is just about Asian greens and they are so brilliant if you like them. Try getting some seed on the internet, eBay, get them abroad, it won't make any difference. I'm just having a quick look at this picture and the, we can see the another unfavourite of mine, which is the Mooley, and those are another blooming awkward one. I've really struggled with them. Before and after longest day, they bolt. No root disturbance, they bolt. I've grown up successfully about once. Rich soil, don't like. Poor soil, don't like. You name it. But as I said, I'd recommend those two books, or a specialist book on those. And on that specific note, I'm going to leave you. I hope you enjoyed that.